Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're gonna uh, mess around with a couple of uh, hardness testers. Uh, we're gonna start with the softer materials and work our way up to the harder materials. Um, I'm gonna start with a couple of durometers. This is A scale, and this is uh, uh, D scale here. So uh, that that is the shore uh, hardness is uh, A and D. And there's another one that's even lower. They call it double lot. And I, I drew up a quick chart to show you how they kind of uh, overlap each other. Uh, the shore double lot starts at zero to a hundred, and uh, at a right around forty-five scale on double zero is when shore A starts at zero. So shore A starts at zero, goes to a hundred, and right around between sixty and sixty-five. A scale is when our shore D scale starts and that starts at zero and it goes out to 100. So the scales do overlap. So uh, within this range between 60 and 100, you could call out uh, scale A or D, either one, depending on uh, what your spec is or, um, you know, what the customer is asking for. Now, I've been at a disadvantage for a long time. I've had to rely on my suppliers to tell me what my material is. And uh, there's been a couple of times where I've been off spec. You know, I, I rely on my plastic supplier to tell me what hardness it is. And my customer's expecting a very specific hardness. And I'm flying blind. I, I, I'm delivering parts that aren't meeting their specs. So um, it, was, it was good to get these in here. And I did a few experiments. And I'm gonna show you a few interesting things. Let's start with, uh, I got a rubber mat here. Let's show you what a durometer is all about. This is scale A, so this is the soft, uh, or the middle scale, or the softest one that I have. It's a pretty simple gauge. And it's got a little penetrator down here and a flat surface here. And uh, PTC gives, us, gives you a little... Um, Thing to check calibration. So this little fellow is going to be anywhere between uh, it's A scale 67 plus or minus one point. So we we would put the uh, uh, the penetrator in right on that little brass disc just till it lines up, and there we're getting 67. So we can check and make sure that our our gauge is in fact uh, working properly. And you should probably check that every time you go to use it. And uh, these things got a little tattletale. You can take this red needle and just run it all the way down as so. And then when you test something, I'm just going to put it on this rubber mat. When you, when you push and hold and release, you know, you can kind of do it blind. And uh, it's going to tattletale uh, where you were. So I, my read is about 68 or 69. Uh, shore hardness A on that rubber mat. All right, we'll, we can check repeatability. We can go to another another spot on the mat. Same. Same. Make sure you're sitting firmly. And any little uh, bumps or anything in your material is going to affect your reading, you know. Um, so you just need to uh, kind of interrogate it and move around a little bit. So that this is pretty soft material, you know. I can I can press my thumbnail into this pretty easily. So that's getting a good reading there, and we're pretty much in the median of that uh, of that scale. Now, if we did it with the with the shore D, uh, we're going to get a lot lower reading, but we will get a reading. So let's put this away and grab a D. And we're going to test some Teflon and stuff here in a little bit, too. And I'm going to tell you a few things to look out for. All right, so we're going to, we're going to be here on D scale. Flat spot. So there we're only sitting at about 20, 22, 23 on the D scale. So not real good resolution there, you know. You'd, you'd say, well, I think we need to stick with the A scale for doing uh, rubbers and things like that, or rubber mats, if your client is uh, 
and expecting a some kind of report on your overall hardness when you're done. Now, uh, let's talk about how things come out of uh, the extrusion machine. This is a piece of uh, Delrin. Here you can see I've got a rough saw cut. Here I've got a machine finish. But over here is a mill finish. This is where it come out, came out of the extru extrusion machine. Now this isn't the same with all plastics, but when they come out of the extruder, they've got hard shell. So out here, you're going to get a different reading, uh, which is a very flat, smooth surface, which is easy to read, than you are this fly cut surface here. So you are definitely going to get a different reading uh, straight out of the extruder than you are to after you cut through it. It's very similar to uh, like cold rolled steel. You know, it's got that, that thin, hard shell. And another thing we need to look out for is out here, where you've got saw cuts and you've got a rough surface, that little penetrator can drop down in a you know in a valley, or it could sit up on a on a on a peak and you wouldn't know it. So you're going to get very inconsistent readings on a surface like this. Uh, you need to be on a machined nice surface, and like I said before, don't ever rely on the on the extruded uh, surface because that does affect it on some plastics. Uh, Teflon, not so much, but the harder plastics, uh, they've got a really hard shell on them until you break through that uh, and, and start machining it, 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 the softness actually comes down. Um, well, we can take a reading. We're going to use a, a, a D on this because uh, Dalrin is a very hard plastic. And I'll, I'll actually be able to demonstrate, I think, uh, that saw cut, how it... Uh, Oh, it reads. Okay, we're looking at a shore D, uh, about 80, about 88. Over here again, take a couple different readings in a couple different places. Same, 88. Same, 88. Let's go over to that saw cut surface. This is that nasty saw cut, and uh, see how inconsistent our readings get here or if they get inconsistent okay 84 86 86 so uh, not as uh, repeatable and you need to make sure your surface is, uh, there's an 85. So you need to make sure your surface is flat and clean with no up stickers and no valleys for this, uh, for that little penetrator to drop down in. That would uh, uh, give you some bad readings. Yeah, I'm getting 90 there. Oops. Just a shade over 90 out here on the, where it came off of the, the, the mill surface you know, where it came out of the extrusion machine. So uh, harder, I would believe my machine finish and then a saw cut finish is uh, never any good. That's dull. Um, let's find us a little block of, uh, this is a UHMW, which is uh, kind of a, almost like a urethane. And it's pretty, that's pretty soft. Well, let me see, reset my tattletale here. I'm on a machine surface. Yeah, we're down about 68, 69 right there. We're at 70. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Okay, so that's uh, pretty repeatable there. But then if we move over to, there's a, there's a, this looks like a bandsawed cut here. Yeah, it's pretty smooth, but I don't think our results are going to be as repeatable. And we turn our title tail down here. We're on, a, we're on that bandsaw cut. 68. It's a pretty smooth cut. 68. Sixty-eight. Okay, so pretty good. 
not a terrible cut and it's it's uh reasonably smooth so uh you, you do need to keep an eye on that though uh here's a classic example let's say you've got this is just a piece of drop off but we got a rough saw cut over here and then you've got a lathe uh face cut here but it's got a little little tit in the middle now if you were to sit up on that little up sticker there that's going to really mess with your readings let me try to get off of the up sticker here okay so i'm there i'm showing uh about 64. but now let me get let me just hit that up sticker There you have it there, 56. So that, that's not much of a tit on there. You know, it's just got a little tiny tit in the middle, but that'll screw up your readings. And just for the heck of it, we'll, uh, we'll measure that saw cut there. <clears throat> but I can tell you right now, it's gonna be way off. Yeah, 60. 50 <laughs> it's all over the map 60 so uh make sure you get, make sure you're doing it on a flat surface uh teflon there's a piece of there's a piece of uh teflon saw cut here extruded finish here there's a face cut here you know and uh we can do this with the, we can try it with a D scale, see how, see how it does. Teflon's actually pretty soft. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. And let's try the mill, mill surface. And to do this, you need to make sure your round is very smooth and doesn't have any up stickers and use your tattletail and just let that roll across and it will tattletail the highest number you get and there it is 65 6 about 67 on the outer skin Okay, so pretty consistent there. Uh, Teflon, I haven't really experienced it having um, a, a shell on it like the Delrin does or the Peak. The Peak also has kind of a skin on it. Rough bandsaw cut, just for the heck of it. 60, see, don't trust them. Do it again down here. 60. Our other readings were 68, so uh, don't ever trust a raw a raw cut to get a hardness reading. All right, um, I guess that's about it for the plastics. But those are your uh, those are your two durometer scales or your shore scales. And uh, like I say, I work. Some of you guys know I I do work for the local uh, laboratories, um, and they do uh, specify a shore hardness in all their parts um, and I've come to find out if I rely on my plastic supplier I can't rely on my plastic supplier so but now what I can do is I can actually send something back if something comes in and I test it and it's not making the hardness that they specified I can just send it back okay next up is another uh, uh, PTC instrument this is a model 316 uh, now we're getting into the steel hardness testers and I'm going to talk about the best way to uh, use these and uh, how to get repeatable results and um, you know and this is a portable unit I mean this thing replaces pretty much those big benchtop models if you don't have the benchtop space uh, this thing is awesome you know it's, it's it just fits in the drawer of your toolbox and it's pretty good um, let's uh, I need to put batteries in it. I, I don't leave batteries in anything. I had a bad experience with the batteries foaming over and destroying a very nice tool I had. So uh, I, let me get batteries in this thing and I'll show you what this thing is all about. This is the actual reader. 
And this is your penetrator right here, which is uh, basically a snap punch. But let me get, let me battery this thing up and we'll uh, go over it a little bit. Okay, well we've got it, we got batteries in this thing and basically they're just using a little mag light as a light source. And when you turn the body of it, we get a, our light comes on down there at the bottom. So that's your light source for taking your readings. And you just twist the body again and that turns your light source back off. And then uh, we've got a snap punch here. But instead of having a sharp point, it's actually got a carbide ball. And this is a calibrated punch. Um, you know, this, this is more of a calibration tool and more of a, uh, a defined tool than this is. This is simply the reader. So what you do is you come down on your, your test subject and just snap it. And you can see I've got a little tiny divot. Tip the camera down. Burp. There, you're focused on it. Okay, uh, we've got the, uh, the reticle and the microscope set up on the light source right over that little divot we just made in the table. And now all we do is look through the uh, look through the lens straight down, and this gives us a. Uh, uh, when you look at this, you, I I have no way of showing you what I'm looking at. But this is just a mild steel bench top, and this thing is soft as heck. But what you're doing is you're measuring that actual dish. You can see it's, it looks like a salad bowl, uh, essentially down there on that on the table. And it's not a heck of a lot, but when you look through this, through this micro, through the microscope and down through the measuring reticle, uh, that thing's massive, and it's got a very defined dish. And you measure it from the outside of the dish to the outside of the dish across the lines in the reticle, and that's directly relative to uh, hardness. Uh, the harder the material is, the smaller the dish is going to be. So this is a pretty accurate way to confidently measure. Um, the hardness, I I love this thing. Um, it can be used on a anywhere in the shop as long as you're down on a hard surface and, and can punch your material accurately. Uh, just you know, make two or three punch marks in your uh, in your uh, in your test subject and read all three of them and get your average. Uh, I'm my read is usually within a couple points, you know. So I quote uh, 58 to 60 or 60 to 62 or something like that. Um, they do give you a test block right here. And you can see, it, you know, every once in a while you can spot check it. You can see I've got some punch marks in there and uh, taking some readings. Uh, this, punch, this block is 50.9 Rockwell C. And it's a calibrated block. And that comes in the kit. And that's how you verify your readings and essentially train your eye you know when you when you first start looking at these things you need to train your eye what you're looking at and it is subject to interpretation you're not getting a direct gauge reading you are interpreting the gauge every time so make your punch marks in your test block and train your eye to see that uh 50.9 uh and then do then do your test subject and uh, take your reading from there. So that that uh, that test block or that calibrated block helps you uh, kind of train up on using it. And this is a uh, this this is a rebranded by Ral Mike's Toolorama, but uh, it is a PTC unit. And I actually uh, went over and visited PTC, and they uh, and they fixed this thing up for me. When it came to me, it wasn't working. But this is uh, this is actually direct reading, and uh, as you can see, it is PTC. And this one uses an actual diamond on the end. And it's got a very sharp diamond, and this one goes in either a drill press or a, you can put it in a mill, you know, in a, in a collet or in a chuck or something like that. Uh, the thing about this is um, this collar here. See, it takes a, a differential reading between this collar right here and the actual diamond point to get a gauge reading. Now, if this thing is coming down skewed, sli very slightly, if it's coming down skewed, it's going to affect your readings. So make sure your 
uh, table and everything are very perpendicular to your uh, to your quill when you're using it. If you're going to use it on a drill press, you know, a mill, I wouldn't be too worried uh, as long as your head is trammed properly. <laughs> Don't expect this to come down on a test block at, at some kind of angle. Even the slightest angle is going to affect it you know, a, a couple of points. Uh, so it, you have to get it set up properly uh, to get uh, readings you can trust. Uh, actually, let's go set it up on the mill and we'll uh, take a couple of readings. We've got two test blocks here. This one's uh, 49 Rockwell C. Yeah, this one's pretty darn hard over here. This one's 62 RC. So we got two test blocks in here so we can measure here and here. And you just simply set your scale by turning your dial here when you've uh, come down on your part. You come down until you make full contact on that little ring right there. So uh, let's go throw it on the mill and play with it. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our test uh, meter mounted in the mill. I'm using the mill vise as a, a working surface. And I've got a 49 uh, test block here. And I'm just gonna. I've I've stoned off my the top of my mill vise, and I've got the everything all the axes tight. And we're just gonna come down, and you just push till it stops. And then what I'm looking for is 49. So I'm just gonna turn my dial till I get my 49. Yes, so. And then we're gonna come maybe over here. You never want to do two readings right next to each other. Okay, so we repeat. I'm pretty happy there. And just come down until you hit that little collar. And there you're like 48. So we're within a point. I'm going to, just to show you how how uh, critical perpendicularity is, I'm just going to take a piece of paper and slip it in under one side of the test block. And take a reading again. 42. All right. So if you're out of out of uh, perpendicularity with the tool, there's a 44. Uh, if you're out of perpendicularity with the tool, it's definitely going to cause uh, going to make a make a difference in your readings. So you need to be very square and very perpendicular to what you're uh, reading against. And here we should be back to our yep back to our 49. All right. So at that point, you're calibrated, you're ready to use it, bring in your test subject, drop it in, take some readings, and then when you're done, go back to your, your cal block and make sure you repeat there. So um, the softer the material is, the lower it is on the scale. And it doesn't matter where this dial is, what it reads is what it reads. You know, as your diamond wears and things like that, uh, it, it, it's going to change. So always calibrate with your blocks before you start off. This is a great way... To do a lot of parts you can do it quickly and uh, get good results um, the diamond on these is fragile so if you're you know if you're coming down and maybe you're halfway down make sure you don't move your parts sideways you can snap the tip of that diamond off make sure you're uh, you know got on a good solid surface and uh, make sure your parts are not uh, angled in any way so this this wouldn't really work on anything curved or anything with an irregular surface or anything like that, um, I would go back to your little portable for that, uh, your little portable hardness tester, the, the 316. But if you've got a lot of uh, flat parts to do, uh, this is definitely the way to do it. So, all right, uh, that's what this model is all about. And uh, I'd like to thank the folks over at PTC for uh, actually fixing this for me and calibrating it. Uh, they put a new diamond tip on it and did a quick calibration on it, and uh, it works beautifully. And I'm, I'm real happy with this setup for uh, uh, if you've got a lot of parts to do. But uh, I've compared readings between the 316, the little portable, and this uh, that goes in your mill or your drill press. So, And they're within a couple points of each other. So this that's the difference between direct reading right here. This is, you know, you're reading right off a dial. Uh, to the other one, which is is subject to interpretation, but you can uh, read with the 316 with a, an awful lot of confidence after you get a trained eye. All right, uh, let's go back to the bench, and do a quick overview of all of them, and uh, wrap this up. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up a little bit. 
I'm going to go through them one last time. The 316 is awesome after you get a trained eye. It is subject to interpretation uh, because there's human error involved in, in reading it. But after you train your eye, I find it uh, very reliable. If you've got one or two pieces to do, it, uh, it's, it works well. If you need to test something on a machine, on the lathe, an irregular surface, whatever, you can take this tool over to your machine and check it right on your machine. Uh, if you have a lot of parts to do, it's time consuming. So that's the uh, 316 by PTC Instruments. The other one, uh, which I showed you over on the mill, that's this little fella here. That's the uh, 415 by PTC Instruments. Um, if you've got a lot of parts to do, uh, you can really whip through them. Uh, direct reading, reads right off the gauge. Um, calibration blocks are there, easy to set up, easy to run, as long as you've got an available mill or drill press you can use to do your, uh, do your tests. Um, so if you've got a lot of parts to do, very good tool. Uh, the diamond, you have to be careful with it. Your parts have to be dead flat. You can't have any irregular surfaces with this one. So uh, that's, the, that's the cons of this. And, you know, these two kind of overlap each other. You know, where this one is no good, this one's awesome. And back and forth. This one, the 316 is a little slow. But uh, the 415, uh, you can really speed through them. Irregular surfaces, use the 316. Uh, so, you know, one con kind of complements the other. So that's my take on those uh, harness testers. The other two, which are actually new to me, you know, um, just got these, the A and the D uh, durometer. Uh, these are just a great shop tool to have if you work with plastics and you have to follow a spec. Uh, I can check my material when it comes in, um, you know, to make sure it's meeting uh, the spec that the, uh, that the manufacturers or my supplier is quoting me. Uh, it's got a, it's self-checking. It's got its own little uh, uh, test block there, so you can check it every time you go to use it. And uh, drawbacks on those are uh, has to be flat. You can't uh, easily check curved surfaces. If you do check uh, uh, a round, you have to be very careful how you do it and take multiple readings and average your readings. Um, but outside of that, these things are uh, pretty easy to read, and those are direct reading and not subject to interpretation. All right. So I'd like to thank the folks over at PTC Instruments for... Uh, uh, repairing my old one um, and keeping my three my 316 in tip-top shape if you want to go check them out go check out uh, ptc1.com all right guys I uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching